Good day, Grade 8s, and welcome to our Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences lesson. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade8 at worksheetcloud.com. My name is Mrs. Ernston, and I'm the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences teacher. As we work through this lesson, you will find that there are little icons with a piece of paper and a pencil. That means that it really is important for you to copy down this information. And sometimes you might find a little hourglass. This means that you may need more time to complete the questions or the activity, so you may need to pause the video. With our first activity, this lesson, I would like us to do an I see, I think, I wonder. So I'd like you to look at the pictures below and the first thing I'd like you to write down is make a list of all the things that you can see in each of these pictures. Then when you finish that, I want you to put another heading that says I think. And I want you to write down everything that you thought about while you were looking at these questions and these pictures. And then I would like you to make another subheading with I wonder. And I would like you to write down everything that makes you wonder about what you can see. So to help you, you can start off with I wonder if, or I wonder what, or I wonder where, or I wonder why this happens. Or I wonder how it happens. Or I wonder when it happens. So you may need to pause the video now so that you can do the I see, I think, I wonder activity. So I came up with a few questions after doing that activity. One of them was, I wonder what static electricity is. Another thing was, I wonder what is friction? And then, why does my hair stand on end and sometimes I can hear a crackling noise and, and if it's dark, I can see sparks when I pull a jersey off my head? Other things that we may have thought about is, what is lightning? And what does it mean to earth an object? And what do the pluses and minuses mean? And what does it mean when we say opposites attract? So let's begin this lesson and see if we can answer some of your questions. So the work that we're going to be covering this lesson is highlighted here. So firstly, we're going to have a look at friction, which is rubbing between certain materials such as plastic, perspex, glass, nylon, wool, and silk. And when we have friction between these materials, we get a transfer of electrons between the atoms of the two materials being rubbed together. The second thing we'll have a look at is how electrons move from one material, causing a positive charge on its surface and causing a negative charge on the surface of the other material. And we'll go through the structure of an atom and we'll learn how it is only the electrons that are transferred. The protons and neutrons in an atom do not move. Thirdly, we'll look how objects or materials with the same or like charges repel each other. And objects or materials with opposite or unlike charges attract each other. And then, what happens when a discharge of electrons causes the sparks or a shock of static electricity, especially when the air is dry? I would like to have a look at your prior understanding of static electricity. So when you look at the diagram of this little boy with his hair on end, or this plastic ruler with paper that seems to be attracted to it, and when you see a plus and when you see a minus, 
Could you write down three thoughts or words that you may have? Any two questions and a possible analogy. So an analogy is something that is similar to this. So can you think of something unrelated but similar to your hair standing on end when you go down a plastic slide? Or something similar to a plastic ruler picking up bits of tissue paper? And something similar to positive and negative charges? And we'll pick up on your thoughts and your question and your analogy at the end of the lesson. So have you ever felt a slight shock or you've heard a crackle or you've seen some sparks when you put a jersey over your head on a cold day? Or perhaps you've observed your hair stand on end when you touch certain objects. This is the effect of static electricity and static electricity is all around us. But we do not always recognize it when we see it or feel it. It is important that you get down a definition for electricity. So electricity is a form of energy resulting from the existence of charged particles. And when we speak about charged particles, we are referring to electrons or protons. And they can either be statically charged, which is an accumulation of charges, or that form of energy can be dynamic and flow, as in an electric current. But for today's lesson, we need to focus specifically on defining static electricity. And that is a buildup of a stationary electric charge. This charge can either be positive or negative. And the buildup of this charge is on the surface of an object. This buildup of charge is typically produced by friction and that causes the sparks or the crackling or the attraction of dust or the attraction of hair. Atoms can neither be created nor destroyed during chemical reactions. And are atoms the smallest particles of matter? So here we have a structure of an atom. Atoms are made up of three different kinds of subatomic particles, and they are called electrons, protons, and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus at the center of the atom. So if we have a look at this diagram, here is the nucleus, and they are found at the center of the atom. Plus indicates proton, and the blank one stands for zero, which indicates neutron. So there is no charge written in there. So protons are positively charged, represented with a plus. Neutrons are neither positively or negatively charged. They do not carry any charge. And they are neutral subatomic particles. So if we need to remember these, protons are positively charged. Neutrons are neither and they do not carry a charge. Electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles. They are much smaller than protons and neutrons. And electrons are fast moving. They form a cloud that surrounds the atomic nucleus. And here you can see the electrons moving around to form a cloud. So all atoms have a nucleus which contains protons and neutrons. 
the nucleus is held together by a very strong force, which means the protons within a nucleus can be considered to be fixed there. The atom also contains electrons. So just a reminder, where are the electrons arranged in the atom? Yes, correct. Electrons are fast moving and they form a cloud that surrounds the atomic nucleus. Can you remember what the charge is on a proton? Yes, it was positive. What is the charge on a neutron? It's zero. It's neutral. It carries no charge. And what is the charge of an electron? It's negative. When we have a look at electricity, it's very important that we have a look at the difference between conductors and insulators. So a conductor is something that can conduct electricity and an insulator does not conduct electricity. So things that can conduct electricity are Objects that are made out of metal. So a metal spoon, or a bar of gold, or sea salt water, or lemon juice, or copper wiring, or steel rods. Insulators that do not conduct electricity could be rubber tires, wooden planks, oil, fabric, material, diamonds, and plastic or perspex rods, and glass. So we have a little experiment that we are going to do today. And we're going to take a plastic rod and a ruler and some cloth or fabric or silk or nylon wool. So here are some so examples of plastic ruler or a plastic or perspex rod. And here are different types of cloth or fabric or silk or wool. So when we initially look at the objects, they are both neutral. So how do we know this? Well, let's count the charges on each subject. So on our plastic rod, it has one, two, three positive charges, and it has one, two, three negative charges. So that means the positive and the negative charges balance each other out. Let's have a look at the cloth. The cloth has 12 positives. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve positive charges, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. So it has 12 positive charges and 12 negative charges. So the positive and the negative charges cancel each other out. So the cloth is neutral. So what do you think will happen when we take our plastic ruler or our plastic or perspex rod and we rub it with a cloth? We are going to create friction. So here we have a diagram of a plastic rod and a cloth duster. Now have a look at what has happened to the charges in this diagram. Remember that to start out with, our plastic rod had three positive charges and three negative charges. And our cloth 
had 12 positive charges and 12 negative charges. So our plastic rod still has three positives, but how many negatives does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our plastic rod has gained some negative charges. And where did it gain those negative charges from? Well, let's have a look at the cloth dust. The cloth or the duster has still got 12 positive charges. But negative charges, it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that means that it lost 5 electrons or 5 negative charges to the plastic rod. which means that our plastic rod has more electrons, so we say that it is negatively charged. Our cloth has now lost electrons, so it now has less electrons, so we say that it is positively charged. So we started out initially with a neutral rod, and a neutral cloth. The neutral rod had three positive charges and three negative charges, and the neutral cloth had 12 positive charges and 12 negative charges. After rubbing the rod and the cloth together, our rod now had three positive charges and eight negative charges, and our cloth still had 12 positive charges, but only seven negative charges. So we have dragged the surface of the plastic rod against the surface of the cloth. When the two surfaces were rubbed together, there was friction between them. It is important to get this next definition down, and that is that friction is a resistance against the movement of an object as a result of its contact with another object. This means that when you rub the plastic rod along the cloth, the cloth resisted the movement of the plastic rod and slowed it down. The friction between two surfaces can cause electrons to be transferred from one surface to the other. So the atom is held together by electrostatic attraction between the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electrons. So within an atom, the electrons closest to the nucleus are the most strongly held, whilst those further away experience a weaker attraction. So normally, atoms contain the same number of protons and electrons. So this means that atoms are normally neutral because they have the same number of positive charges as negative charges. So the charges balance each other out. Remember that all objects are made up of atoms. And since atoms are normally neutral, that means objects are also usually neutral. So when we rub the two surfaces together, like when we rub the plastic rod and the cloth, the friction caused the electrons to be transferred from one object to another. The protons are fixed in place in the nucleus, so they cannot be transferred between atoms. It is only electrons that are able to be transferred to another surface. Some objects give up electrons more easily than other objects. Let's look at the following diagram to see and explain how this happens. So here we have a diagram of a girl brushing her hair. And as she brushes her hair, electrons are transferred from the brush to her hair. 
so the brush has lost electrons to her hair. So the brush bristles become positively charged and the hair becomes negatively charged. I wonder if you can tell me what is happening in this picture here. So now we have the brush that has the positive charge, but when the brush is brought close to the hair, the hair starts to stand up and it starts to move closer to the brush. Well, let's see if we can work out why. So when an object gave up some of its electrons, it means that it lost electrons. So in this diagram, which object gave up some of its electrons? So our cloth or our dusting cloth gave up electrons to the plastic rod. So does this object now have more positive or negative charges? So if we have a look at the cloth duster, the cloth duster has one, two, three, four plus charges and one negative charge. So we now say that this cloth duster is now positively charged because it has more positives. So which object gained electrons in the diagram? Here, our rod gained electrons in the diagram. So does the rod now have a more positive or more negative charge? The rod now has a more negative charge. So when an object has more electrons than protons overall, we say that the object is negatively charged. And when an object has fewer electrons than protons overall, we say that the object is positively charged. So if we have a look at this diagram here, it has one, two, three, four, four, five, six charges that are positive, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six charges that are negative. So six positive charges plus six negative charges will equal naught, because in maths, plus multiplied by a minus give us a minus. So six minus six equals zero. So there is a zero overall charge and we say that the object is neutral. So in this diagram we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positive charges and one, two, three, four, five, six negative charges. So eight plus negative six equals 2. So the overall charge is plus 2. So we say that the object is positively charged. In this diagram here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 positive charges. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 negative charges. So 6 plus minus 9 will equal minus 3. So the overall charge is minus 3, which means the object is negatively charged. So let's revise this activity now. Here we have a cloth that has 6 positive charges, one, two, three, four, five, six, and six negative charges. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we have a ruler that has one, two, three, four positive charges and one, two, three, four negative charges. So that means at the beginning of this experiment, our cloth is neutral and our plastic ruler is neutral. So we have a neutral charge on both the cloth and the ruler. Now we rub the cloth 
and the ruler together, and that is called friction. And if we have a look at the end of the experiment, the ruler has one, two, three, four positive charges, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative charges. So if we say four plus negative eight, we get an answer of negative four. So the overall charge is minus four. We say that the ruler is negatively charged. The cloth has one, two, three, four, five, six positive charges and one, two negative charges. So that means that the cloth will be positively charged. So the cloth is 6 plus negative 2, which equals plus 4. So the overall charge is plus 4, and the cloth is positively charged. Standing. with any new thoughts or ideas or understandings that you developed in today's lesson. So let's go back and have a look at your three thoughts or words, your two questions and your one analogy that you had at the beginning of the lesson. And I would like you now to write down three new or different thoughts or words that you developed through the lesson. The two additional questions you may have and see if you are able to create another analogy. And what I would really like you to do is see if you could bridge your previous thoughts with your new thoughts and build a bridge between your previous questions and your new questions and your analogy at the beginning of the lesson and see how your analogy has developed as we reach the end of the lesson. You can discover more if you go and look at this website that's on the screen above. And there's some exciting activities you can do with balloons and a jersey. So if you just pause the video and copy down this web internet address. If you have any questions, remember you can email your questions to gradates at worksheetcloud.com. I would like to acknowledge the use and the references made to the following YouTube clip on static charges, which cover the topics of electricity and physics from Fuse School. So, Grade 8, thanks for watching this lesson and I would also like to thank Worksheet Cloud for making it possible to bring this lesson to you. Goodbye, Grade 8s.